it up. Hey guys, Eric Farewell from Aviator here, and today we are gonna bring you guys a new paramotor tech talk. This one on a subject that some people love, most people hate, but it's very, very necessary if you're still flying one of those rudimentary things called an engine, the carburetor. If you don't have fuel injection yet, and you're looking to find out more about how to turn this into this and make things clean again, make things right again, understand how to make your engine run better, tune, just make everything better. Watch the video, enjoy, Alex, take a while. Welcome to another edition of Paramotor Tech Talk. Today we're gonna to be talking about a simple but complicated subject, carburetors. The carburetor concept is actually very simple. However, when people purchase the actual carburetor kit and they see all the little intricate parts, it's actually get a little bit uh, complicated and intimidated, but it's really simple. Let's explain. Today we have a WV37 carburetor. There appear to be almost the same, but yet different. If you see the difference between the two, one of them have a priming pump in on one side, the other one does not, although you can still prime it that way. In the other side, you have a vacuum line over here. Over here is plugged up. The basic principle is that it uses crankcase pressure to create a vacuum and pump the gas into the carburetor. The way the carburetor works is basically atomized fuel by mixing air and fuel uh, mixture into your cylinder, creating combustion. In the case of the one with no vacuum line, basically it uses the reed valve. You have a port that actually goes right underneath the carburetor and you basically work the same principle. It uses as a pump to actually pump the gas into the carburetor. Uh, in this particular, both of these carburetors, you have a high and a low side of it that you can adjust the mixture you have your idle adjustment with your throttle. You have your intake, where the gas actually goes in. Your Venturi and your Butterfly. So let's begin the rebuild. First thing, open up your kit. You see that there is a tons of parts and gaskets in this particular kit. The good thing is that you will not use all of them because this kit is actually for a generic WV37. You only use the necessary parts. In the case, in my case, and my recommendation is that you only use the parts that are actually wearing off. So you don't have to replace all the filters if the filters are in good shape and you are able to clean them out. And I'll show you all those filters once we start opening the carburetor. So let's begin the disassembly of the carburetor. It's pretty simple. You need a screwdriver, basically removing all four screws over here, and also in the other side. When removing this particular side, you can see a little rivet over here. That rivet is actually attached to an arm so make sure you kind of slide it out and that goes right into the arm. This is the back diaphragm. Often in times you see this particular diaphragm that is actually stretched between these lines. When you see that and you have excessive stretch marks, basically it's time to change it. That also causes mixture changes within your carburetor. So uh, it's highly suggested you actually get a brand new one on it. On the metering side, you have the needle valve that meters the actual uh, fuel coming in. All right, you have the arm and basically you have this plate here as you can see over here, you have an actual filter. The filter is actually included in your kit. You have several filters that are included. They're not all always necessary to actually be changed. You can actually, in this particular carburetor, take it off and clean it from the other side. If the actual filter is damaged, it's highly recommendable to actually change it. In this particular carburetor, you have a small circlip around the filter and the filter. The circle is included in your kit. So have your filters and you have your plug. Some carburetors actually use a plug and they have those ports plugged in. So not in this case. Now the last step is taking out the needle valve over here. You simply take that screw, 
Be very careful in this case not to lose that spring. That spring is actually not part of the rebuild kit and it's really hard to find. So basically take the needle valve arm out. You can take the spring out and please keep it and the needle and the seat valve. A lot of times you get a little bit of dirt over here and it's also change your mixture or something cause the carburetor to leak. At this point in time, get a good uh, carburetor cleaner with the nozzle and you can actually clean all the crevices of the actual carburetor. In the case of the filter, if you want to clean it, you can see the circlip with the filter. You can clean it from the back side. Just be aware that any kind of particles that can be invisible to the eye actually can be residing in there. To remove the part, basically you take the circlip off. Like so. And the filter simply will pop out from the back. Just be careful, it's the smallest filter in the carburetor on this kit. Now we're ready to re reassemble. Basically, to reassemble your carburetor is the same steps that you take that you took to actually uh, take it apart, but in reverse. In the case of this particular kit, you will notice that it comes with a black diaphragm and one that is a little bit brownish diaphragm. You can discard the uh, brown diaphragm and please use the black one. When installing this particular diaphragm, just make sure that this groove actually goes between those uh, forks over there for that arm. Now that the carburetor is rebuilt, there are several functionalities over here. You have the idle speed over here. Uh, it's basically a stop on your butterfly. You should set that up once the engine is running or once you have run and warm up the engine and check for idle speed. In the case of Vitorasi Monster 185, you have this particular tape right here on the high side that should be remain on touch. If this is tempered in any way, shape or form, your entire warranty is actually voided. In some others, that's not an issue. You also have the low side, which is the only adjustment you should be able to make. If your carburetor has been deteriorated over time, some of the, um, uh, the diaphragm have been actually stretching, more likely you have made adjustments for temperature as well as compensating for that particular um, uh, deficiency in the carburetor. So you may have to reset that again. 
And the last part that I we have is actually the a vacuum pressure or pop-off pressure. Please follow the manufacturer recommendations on your particular motor and see what they are. In the case of my gauge, it's actually uh, measuring millibars. Some of them are dual gauge with PSI. And you simply connect your hose. As you can see, I have a piece of red hose here. It's a little bit smaller as my hose here is too big. You don't want any leaks anywhere and you want everything to be actually a good seal. And you simply use this gauge, pop it two or three times and check for the pressure that's actually holding on the carburetor. And that's the reading uh, recommended by the manufacturer uh, to actually have the pop up pressure. The way to adjust that pop-up pressure, unfortunately, is actually taking apart the carburetor one more time and the spring that was inside this side over here with the underneath the arm needs to be actually replaced. Most of the time, that is not an issue. Sometimes you can actually uh, stretch it a little bit or uh, compress it to actually uh, come up with that pressure. Sometimes some people cut uh, the spring a little bit too short, but basically that's what you do in order to adjust the pop-up pressure. As we conclude the carburetor rebuild, I hope this demystify a little bit the mystery behind this uh, carburetor and make it a little bit less intimidating. Just make sure you have a rack or a little tray to actually contain all your parts. And in some cases, sometimes I use a tweezer to actually move them around and take them and put them in the carburetor. Thanks for watching this episode of Paramotor Tech Talk. See you next time.